Hello everyone, welcome to another time-lapse sketching tutorial. And this sketch was created at a Starbucks cafe in my neighborhood. So I happen to have a voucher that I have to use because it's expiring. So I had my breakfast there. By the way, this video is the condensed version of the full-length tutorial that I have created for my patrons. So if you guys want to support my YouTube channel and the work that I do here, and also check out the full-length tutorials that I've made over the years, consider supporting me on Patreon. The link is in the video description below. Even though I'm drawing on an iPad for this tutorial, all the drawing techniques featured are applicable if you use pen and ink as well. The app that I'm using is Concepts and usually for a scene that is quite complicated or detailed, I will usually start with drafting lines just to make sure that my composition is correct and I am able to fit everything on the page. Now this app features an infinite canvas so I don't have to worry too much about fitting things onto the page, but I do have to make sure the perspective looks right. So the first thing I did was to find a vanishing point on the left side. The vanishing point is where all the diagonals converge, where all the diagonal lines converge. So you just have to use your pencil or just use your eye and see where those lines converge and I usually mark out the VP, the vanishing point, with a little dot or a cross that you see here on the screen. So when I draw the perspective lines, I can then just draw the perspective lines to the VP. I don't have to rely solely on observation techniques. And this will actually help me draw faster and more accurately. Now for the round tables that you see, uh, these are actually quite challenging to draw in the sense that I have to place them at the correct uh, places and draw them at the correct sizes. So I have already drawn the big bench, the long bench that you see. So to place the round tables, I basically just have them uh, separated, uh, sorry, divided into five or six equal parts and just draw them there. For such a detailed scene like this, when drawing in an actual sketchbook, when drawing on paper, I definitely have to make sure to put down the drafting lines first because there is a good chance that I may run out of space because I notice I have a tendency to draw bigger and bigger as I move on. So by placing the drafting lines down, it helps me to draw the big shapes and once the big shapes are in, I can draw the smaller shapes within the big shapes so that there is no way for me to run out of space on the page. Now this app Concepts is a pretty uh, fun app to use. It's a really simple app to use. Uh, it's really basic. It doesn't have many of the tools that you get with Photoshop or Procreate or other drawing apps. And that is something I like about this app, the simplicity. Okay, so here you see me draw the diagonal lines for the board at the top there behind the counter. So once you have all the diagonal lines pointing to the vanishing point, the perspective of the scene will start to appear. And as mentioned earlier, it's very important to draw the big shapes first, or in this case, the longest lines. Uh, once you have the big shapes, you can just draw the little items like the cakes and uh, bread, the sandwiches in the fridge. Yeah, so that second X that you see there is the second vanishing point, which is almost right in front of me. Generally speaking, when the scene is very wide, there should be two vanishing points. So the line art is almost complete. The most challenging part about this sketch is actually adding all the little details. Because once you place the drafting lines for the perspective, uh, the sketch is, the composition is pretty much there. So all you have to do is to spend the time to add the details. 
If you are drawing in a big sketchbook or on a big piece of paper, you definitely need to draw more details because otherwise, uh, without the details, the sketch is going to look incomplete or unfinished. So for this sketch, I am actually not coloring it. I'm just doing a tonal study. So I have black uh, and the grays. And if you are using traditional media, you can actually use black ink and gray inks. And to create gray inks, you can just dilute the black inks. And I actually have several water brushes filled with gray inks of different values. So when creating a tonal value sketch like this, it's very important to think of contrast. Uh, for example, to make something light on the paper, you can choose not to color anything. But to actually make it light, you have to have something that is darker beside so that you know that something is light. So if you want to make something darker, you can paint multiple layers to make it darker. Or you can place the dark object besides something that looks lighter. So by comparison, the darker object will look darker. So when doing tonal studies, everything is about comparison. Is it white over gray, white over black, black over white, or gray over white? Now you can do all these uh, quick studies at home just to play around with positive shapes and negative shapes. Uh, white over black, black over white, and see what kind of effect you can get. Oh, another very important thing about sketching is try to include overlapping elements. So you can see for this sketch, I have my breakfast over or on top of the table, and the table overlaps the long bench behind, and the long bench overlaps the counter behind. And between the long bench and the counter, there is this person trying to order coffee. And behind the counter, there is the barista. And behind the barista, there is the menu on the wall. So when you create overlapping elements like this, it really helps to create more depth. And it makes your scene look more 3D, more dimensional. So that's it for this short tutorial. I actually have a lot more to say in my full tutorial, which is more than one hour long. So thank you for watching. See you guys in the next video. Bye.